Hello everyone, welcome back to Game Brigade. My name is Brian and today, well, today we're gonna to be doing something that I did not plan on doing, I don't think, ever. You see, we're gonna be unboxing Carnival Zombie Second Edition, Limited Edition. And that's because it just showed up on my doorstep about five minutes ago. And this is a game I thought would never show up from crowdfunding. So I thought, why not film it? Let's examine the game, do an unboxing, and uh, see how this one goes. So, Carnival Zombie. I backed this one, I believe, in 2019, and maybe almost 2018. It probably was 2018 or very early 2019. And uh, this is a second edition project that was raved on by Rado, and that's actually why I backed it at the time. I wasn't making content for board games at the time. I, I fell into the trap of following someone. I, you know, I guess that doesn't help because I'm doing the same here now, you know, talking about board games. But uh, this game, basically, once 2020 hit, disappeared from updates. It was, it was very rarely heard from, and I assumed that the producer, the independent developer, ran out of money. And so when I said that I never thought I would get this game, I honestly believed I would never get this game. Uh, they would do updates every so few months, and when the game was supposed to be done, like it was supposed to be delivered in 2020, like early 2020, maybe tw uh, December 2019, they hadn't even like finished sculpting. So um, I just assumed it was never gonna come. But here we are. First off, uh, let's see, can we, I don't know how well we can see this. I don't know what, how my camera looks. And uh, uh, the upper camera is always hard to figure it out because sometimes it moves. First off, I'm actually really impressed with the with the box art. Uh, you've got some gold leaf uh, art here, and uh, I didn't expect that. It actually looks really good. And they have a uh, <laughs> they have a dice tower seal of excellence down here. So, huh? What else does it say down here? It says uh, we have there's the Venice Carnival Game Zombie, which I knew about, and then the Mendelin survived the Milan Fashion Week. Part of the deluxe edition. I didn't know that was part of this. I only remember the Venice. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what we have. And I actually have a close-up camera today. So if there's anything interesting that we want to get some close-up shots of, we can do. All right. So mm, that brand new board game smell. It's like that. So we've got our velvet bag here. And we have a cardboard play map. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Here's our board. So the idea of this game, if I can remember, because I haven't looked at this game really since 2020. I just, I even did a video. Uh, there's some damage here on the board, unfortunately. Um, I did a video, I think it was in 2020, where I basically said games I regret backing, and this was one of them. Uh, and so I just have basically not looked into this game since then. But the idea of it, if I remember right, is the players are gonna be holding up in the center of Venice, and the zombies are gonna be spawning in different corridors and moving into the center, and you need to um, defeat them by using your abilities, and. You know, it's kind of like a horde mode game. If I would assume this to any kind of board game or video game that might be easily recognizable, I would consider it to like a horde mode. So that was the idea of this game. And the reason I backed it, again, I talked about this in the like, games I shouldn't have backed, was because the art and the, the minis and the theme fell into something my wife would really enjoy. I, you know, she really likes that, that carnival thing. So I was like, oh, you know, this might be something she's into. Um, I, I don't buy games specifically for other people anymore because you know they might fall out of board gaming. This game was years ago, and so she might not be even interested in it anymore either. So that's there's there's that. So let's see what else we got in the board. The board looks crazy. It's hard to really know what the hell's going on without knowing the rules. We've got the Venice Guide. Well, I guess we can uh, bring this in over here. Maybe maybe do our uh, our close-up camera 
Oh, that's really zoomed in. Let's take a look at the rule book. So it's, it's pretty standard paper here. Uh, introduction, game overview. Okay, so we're gonna have some uh, description of cards and items. Uh, doesn't look so bad. It's got a lot of pictures, which is nice. So kind of descriptive with the pictures. Not, it's not walls of text. I mean, there's a lot of text, but it's not too bad. Let's check the back, see what we have in the back. Looks like we have some quick reference information here on the back and um, uh, no index or anything like that for us to do quick references if we need to look up like barricade or survive or anything if we want to go to a certain page. I always recommend having a keyword search or something for players to look up. But yeah, there's the rule book. It doesn't actually look as bad as I was thinking. I, I actually appreciate that it's kind of palatable. Uh, it is uh, 29 pages in total length. Uh, but there's another rule book in here. Uh, we actually have a few documents, let's put that down. This is the Mendelum Guide. This is this might be that, that other game mode. The, the campaign game is described in the rule book. So this might be a campaign game then. Yeah, look at that, so. Shows you what's new. We have different vehicles. I know they had a bunch of minis that they were really surprised, like talking about. The the first edition and all the versions I saw just showed cubes walking around. And I was like not really positive, you know, what the minis would do for the game. Uh, so then what do we have here? We have is this a quick reference sheet? The holy bomb. What is this? The Holy Bomb. I am not sure what this is. It's a, It looks like a reference sheet. It feels like a reference sheet, but I don't know specifically what it is. Okay, there's a whole bunch of sheets like these. So these might be reference sheets for individual things. Of course, I don't know what they are. And I actually had someone comment, oh, you know, when you do an unboxing, you should do more research. I'm like, look, man, I, I'm not the developer of the game. I don't make the games. I don't know the games. I'm buying the games just like other people are. And uh, and this is a game that I backed three, four years ago. So uh, you have to cut me slack on some games if I don't know every detail. I try my best. I give you, I tell you what I know. Because that's the only thing I can do. I can only share what I know. So here are standees. The cardboard standees. And I do see minis as well. So we have um, the different items. I saw some of these in the campaign. Looks like you got the locations. You got some gravestone, different type of road, uh, different kind of uh, carnival masks up there. Uh, here are the zombie types. We got you know uh, some clowns, some big big bruiser guys, more clowny guys. I mean, the theme is definitely on point. This is kind of interesting, the guy with a machine gun, like a, some sort of drum magazine. Okay. Unfortunately, the cardboard has suffered some warpage. Very banana shaped. So we'll see, you know, and it looks like this one are actually components. I wouldn't care if like the, the monsters are banana shaped but like if you can see that bow it's a pretty significant bow and then here we have some more monastery things some churches some gravestones and the whatnot uh, I'm hoping that I could use more of the minis in replacement than the standees though so let's see let's check out these minis first off I am uh, okay first off it's got a nice insert, props for that. And it looks like they've labeled all of the character locations uh, as best as they can, and I'll have to learn what they mean, but they are labeled, which is cool. And I know this giant mini here, we'll pull them out first to show them on the close-up camera. This is the one that caused a lot of issues, I guess, for the guy. And it actually looks pretty good. It's pretty hefty, pretty solid, great detailing. I mean, even down here, you got great detailing. If you are, uh, uh, oh wow, even looking here, 
into his chest. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can zoom in a little bit with this camera. Yeah, look at that. You got these guys crawling out of his skin. Really impressed, guys, with this. For a, you know, I should I should give some slack to the guy. It's like Abel something. What's his name? Abel Pavo. I am very impressed with the quality of the miniature here the detailing i know they spent a long time at least in the in the updates doing these these minis and sculpting them and you can tell that there is care and in, 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 in attention to detail here so yeah that's the snake let's see what else we have here let's see if some of these smaller guys they feel like resin they feel like resin minis let's focus up there we go yeah, even this guy, this is a fairly small mini, and I referenced my finger for reference, and uh, really impressed on the details, even all the way back here in his spine. If you are a, a, a good painter, you can make something really, really impressive here. I am not a very good painter, so I don't really like to pretend I am. This looks like a player character. They're white. So they're not the gray, kind of uh, beige gray. Uh, but that looks like a character. His face, can we get a better shot of his face? That is probably the closest shot that I can give you that's in focus. Look at this 4K, highest quality unboxings on YouTube, brought to you right here by Game Brigade. Look at that, you could see my freaking fingerprint. That is pretty small. Let's go ahead and take that back out to a standard size. And see what else we got. Oh, this one's gonna be cool. We're gonna do a zoom in on this guy too. Let's go here to three. Let's check this guy out. Full gaping maw in his gut. Pretty pissed off looking face. Yeah, that's really good. I'm still, the most impressive again is the snake. Definitely really the most impressive that they have. So let's see what we got. Anything else uh, that just stands out to me uh, in terms of the minis? I don't really want to sit here and go, you know, we can spend an hour looking at the minis. I just want to see if there's anyone that's really, okay, this guy was cool. This is one of the guys, one of the characters that like my wife would like. So let's go back in. So he's got that carnival mask we were talking about. Because of the white, he's having a hard time picking them up. So what do we got here? He is also extremely small. I mean, just really, really small. But still pretty good detailing all the way throughout, even to his little syringe, which you can't even see because it wants to focus my finger. You can see it right there, uh, his syringe right here. Pretty good. I mean, it's better in person, I'll tell you that. Um, you could ever translate, oh, you got this little dog guy. That's kind of cool. The skeletal beast dog. I think this will be fun. This is a new one. And then we got, as I was talking about, we have all these cubes. So I'm still, I'm probably sure that the game will still use a massive amount of cubes, I would bet. So these are actually inserts that come out. So just those two come out, just that one rather comes out. And then we got a bunch of stuff that sits here in the middle. It looks like we have a, a way for this to rebox. So let's go ahead and move this camera out of the way for the time being. So what do we got? So as I mentioned, the gameplay, from what I gathered, is gonna have these cubes on this game board. I don't know what I'm trying to do here, but we're doing it live. So you'll have your character, let's just grab someone, this is definitely not a human character, but he would be there, and you're gonna like spawn, and based on what the cards are gonna do, they're gonna be like, okay, we spawn some guys in the blue sector, and over here, and then these guys move up, and then something like that. And you're gonna have to decide who are you going to engage to clear as things progress. Something to that manner. 
uh, is the best that I can relate as you try to navigate your way, navigate your way, I can't remember how they navigate, but they navigate their way to escape the city because you have up here the track of the city. And I believe you're trying to escape the uh, Venice that has now been infected with uh, some sort of virus. So we've got all these cubes. Those will represent different types of zombies and minions. We got a lot of purples, a lot of greens. Um, we got some wooden meeples. Standees for the standee zombies. I sure hope I don't have to use standees. And then we've got some cards here. It's been a while since I've done an unboxing. Unboxing videos are hit and miss for me sometimes because obviously the only people that really want to watch this are people that care about the game or are going to be invested in learning about the game. And uh, with a game that's like this one, that's gonna be such limited uh, viewership, I could see there being a limited amount of people actually interested in watching this. But to me it was interesting because the game was a game that I had given all hope on. And so I'm glad that it's proving me wrong. I'll eat my hat and uh, see what we got. So it looks like we have different types of cards here. They have different backs. These are probably the playable characters, if I had to guess, based on maybe their abilities and yeah, their items. That's what these look like. So we have different, we have Caroline. I can't read these names, uh, like Balzino. Definitely Italian looking names. Melgelino. I can't I can't pronounce them. I don't even know if I want to attempt to. So yeah, looks like we got a stack of player cards. And they're just items. And they, you know, they have uh, some interesting art. And they have things like uh, get plus one stress to perform a free action. Sacrifice a green vermin to cancel an event. So yeah, they're just action card, event cards, things to interact and have some mitigation towards the game system, which is kind of game I want. I want agency and I want the ability to uh, manipulate the board to help me win. I want to be able to use strategy to win and those are the kind of games I like. So we have these cards are a little bit more tarot shaped, but they're not quite tarot length. So let's see what these are. All the same back and uh, maybe these cards, these might be events. So these I think might be the spawning mechanisms. So this might be like the, the main bad guy that comes out and maybe these are things, I don't know. They look like these are definitely the events because these are the monsters, the bad monsters that we just saw minis of. And then I think the standard zombies are cubes. I think that might be the game. You have the big villain monster and then it spawns basic monsters. Yeah, these look like to be events or some sort of, sort of spawning card thing. So that's that. Let's put this guy back. We've got a interesting coin here. Very interesting. Huh. You know, what it makes me wonder, what if like in a thousand years thousand years some some guy digs my house up and the only thing left is this coin and he wonders oh man what what nation was this coin that had a death animal and, and some stuff on it you know that would be kind of interesting to wonder you know, that's probably because my brain is going to archaeology i watch a lot of archaeology if you guys ever watch uh time team it's on bbc it's an old show old old show i doubt anyone watches it uh, but they are a archaeological team that digs uh, up in Brit Britain mostly. And they have three days to discover what they believe could be somewhere. Usually digging up pre prehistoric locations, Iron Age, and Roman artifacts. I love the show. It's kind of a guilty pleasure for me. I really, really enjoy it. But I'm also an, a, a, a history nerd. I love Roman um, history. I have ancestry in both Rome and um, Scotland, so I kind of enjoy learning about my my ancestors and how they lived a thousand, two thousand years ago. So, what do we have here? So these have Carnival Zombie on the back. 
Uh, so these are a deck, and then this is, looks like potentially more player cards. Looks like these are more player cards for more playable characters. Uh, this guy definitely doesn't have very many cards, so he might be a continuation from this other stack. Let's put his up here on top, because he definitely, I think he probably is down here somewhere. Yeah, right here. There we go. Easy. Easy. That's how we do it. We'll make sure we'll, we'll go through that, make sure I did everything right. Uh, and then what is this? Okay, maybe these are things? I have no idea what I'm looking at here. It says clear sky plus one day hour. So we get another hour. I remember a clock now. And then you got some things going on up here with a little flag and something going on down here. Yeah, no idea uh, what any of this means without knowing the rules. <laughs> whatever, whatever I'm looking at. And so that's the last thing is here is the, the player cards. These are the player boards. They are a little softer in terms of weight. I could easily see these being laminated to give them a little bit more... Uh, you know, almost like sleeving them effectively. Give them a little bit more oomph because they're really, really flimsy. Um, man, they really made Columbia. She's very busty and almost popping out of her top. It's a little nuts. Um, but yeah, that's... These are all the different characters you can play. What do we got in the back? Nothing, just their full art. And um, yeah, that is really... Okay, so here we go. And then we have the player aids. So these are the player aids. So those big ones I was looking at ain't player aids. Because these actually say player aids. Five player aids. This is a, or maybe six player aids. It's a six player game. Yep. Six player game. Six player aids. I have a board game event coming up. Uh, retreat. A board game retreat. I think we might have six people going. So this might be a game we might play on the retreat. A six player game. It's kind of hard to find those kind of games. So that's that. So this is Carnival Zombie. I hope you guys enjoyed this unboxing. It's been a while since I've done an unboxing. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you made it to the end. I always appreciate you guys. In fact, the ones that make it to the end and leave the wolf emoji, which is becoming the new thing, uh, you guys are literally my favorite people. You are my people. You are my tribe. Thank you for being part of the show. I thank you again, everyone watching the show till the end. Talk to you soon. This is Brian from Game Brigade. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Well, that's, that's a thing. Carnival Zombie. <laughs>